Don't miss out on the special offer from my sponsor, Buy Madden Coins. They're currently giving you 20% off if you use my coupon code Poodle at checkout and also giving you an additional 10% coins at checkout. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Poodle back with another video, and today I'm be doing a tier list. I've been seeing a ton of YouTubers doing these, so before you tell me I'm copying or doing whatever shit you guys want to say, everyone's doing them. They're fun to do, and I'm really I'm big into fantasy football and I'm big into real NFL, not just the video games. So I do enjoy talking about these players and. Truthfully, I didn't have a Madden channel. I'd probably have some kind of fantasy podcast or some kind of NFL type talk kind of channel. That's probably what I would like to do anyways. So I think it's going to be pretty cool to do. So this isn't the typical one that everyone's doing per se. I changed up the uh, the tiers because I feel like instead of talking about players where they currently are, I'm going to talk about how I feel they'll do this season. Like the rookies I'm not just going to put into like they have potential. I'm going to put them where I think they will perform this year based on whether or not they'll play. If you guys enjoyed this, Smash the like button and drop some comments. Let me know you enjoyed. I'll do some more. I'll do some running backs, some wide receivers, some teams. I'll do some cool things to kind of ease the air a little bit going into Madden 20 so I can have something to do. Keeps me busy. Okay, so starting with the tiers, we got the SS, which is the superstars. Those are above the elite. Those are the quarterbacks that you they're always the favorite in every game they play. They're the elites, just the typical top 10 quarterbacks. There's the borderline elites, the guys who could break that this year or who will be close to it, but they won't just quite cracking above average is just that guy that can go he can give you a 10 and 6 season he's might go 8 and 8 he's he's above average but he doesn't have the he doesn't have the the peripherals of a elite quarterback and there's the average those are just the guys those are like the fill-in starters the guys who are situational guys they manage the game they're just there and the below average are well you'll see it pretty soon the below average their ass but i start off with the first so alex smith alex smith is the prototypical game manager he is hurt right now. I don't even think he'll have much of a job this year. So, with Dwayne Haskins coming in, he's just going to be there as a, as a fill-in if he does come back, which I don't even think he will. And just by that, I'm going to have to put Alex Smith in just average at this point in the, for this year if he even gets to play. At his best in his career, he was a borderline elite. In the last few years, he's just been above average. And after the big injury and with his role concerns, he's just going to be average at this point in his career. Next, we got Josh Allen. I actually think Josh Allen will perform. I, the thing about Josh Allen is he has a massive arm. He can run. He's going to put up the stats. So for that reason, I have to put him, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put Josh Allen above average. I actually think he's a really good quarterback. He obviously isn't the most accurate, but that could be worked on. He does have the speed. He has the athleticism. He does a lot of good things, and his team sucked. Remember, he had, had no O line. He had barely any wide receivers. Barely a tight end. Barely anything. Not a good game plan. So many things could have been better with him, and he still did pretty good for a Buffalo quarterback with a team that was just not all there. Baker Mayfield, I'm gonna put him at, I'm gonna put him at above average. I don't want to overrate him yet, just yet, because we don't know how he's gonna play with Odell and Jarvis and everything, and how chemistry is gonna work. You never know. Yeah, they look like they could be Super Bowl contenders, but how many times I thought a team was going to be a Super Bowl contender, and the locker room gets messed up. There's so. In the preseason, one there's one big injury, the locker room gets messed up, they have no chemistry, and they underperform. So Baker Mayfield, I know in the same tier as Josh Allen seems crazy, but they he they both did really good their rookie season. Baker Mayfield just has a lot more hype. I do think he could crack the borderline elite this season, but I'm not gonna put him there because that'd just be me overrating him as of so I have to see what he's gonna do first. But I feel like that's a fair assessment of where he should be now. We got Ben Roethlisberger, and Ben Roethlisberger. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a fair assessment. I'm gonna put him in borderline elite, and that's just because Ben Roethlisberger he has he's he's inconsistent. If he was consistent, his stats with consistency, he'd be in the elite. He could even be pushing for superstar status, but he can't be consistent. If you ever seen his home and away splits, you'll see what I'm saying. I'm pretty sure it's at home he could, he averages like almost 300 yards, three touchdowns, and then away he averages like 160 yards, one touchdown. And now from from first from perspective of seeing Steelers games and having him in fantasy, if you have him when he's home. He will put. He'll give you a top five quarterback finish, and when he's away, he'll give you a bottom fifteen. He's like that, so that's why he's borderline elite. He has flashes of elite. He has the ability to be elite, but he just can't keep it all together. Now, Drew Brees, I'm going to put in. I was contemplating superstar, but Drew Brees, right now, I feel like he's he is he's an amazing quarterback. He's accurate, but he's not like that kind of take over the game type quarterback. If you understand what I'm saying, he's he will make all the throws. He makes all the right decisions. That is why he's elite. But he's not like a like a Tom Brady, like a Mahomes, where they could just 
take the game the whole way. Like, Drew Brees has so much help. He has Kamara. He has Ingram. Michael Thomas. I'm blanking on some receivers, but you get the point. The point is, don't kill me for this. I'm, gonna have to put him in, I'm putting him in elite just for that simple aspect that he is amazing. He's a top five quarterback in the league. He might even be a top three. But I feel like Superstar is the kind of guy that just give him the ball and he'll make everything happen. Drew Brees this year, even though he had amazing stats, when the game was on the line, he it comes down to his other guys. Like, he gives it to Thomas and Kamara. What will they do with the ball? Not so much what Drew Brees is going to do with the ball. But don't, don't get me wrong. He's elite. Now, Cam Newton. Another guy that people like to overhype. He's amazing. He's a great quarterback. He just fits the bill, right? The six foot four, whatever quarterback, big frame, sturdy, can run, can pass. He fits the bill of the next superstar, right? Like that, that, that superstar quarterback. But the thing about Cam Newton is that he's inconsistent. He has injury woes. He has a bunch of he's bunch he's a bunch of little red flags about him right now. Obviously, he doesn't have the he didn't have the proper receivers in my opinion, and the old line was a little little shaky last year. But even with the white, even with the right receiver, I feel like he still has some issues when it comes to passing, which is why he's also going to be in borderline elite. He ha he he has glimpses, he has stretches where he's like torrid, like uh, uh, unreal, insane. But it just doesn't hold up the majority of the time. Okay, so now we got Derek Carr. Derek Carr at one point looked like the next superstar in the NFL. He was an MVP candidate, and then he broke his ankle. I'm pretty sure. Something with his lower body. And ever since that ever since that happened, he's went downhill. The Raiders have went downhill. They did pick up Antonio Brown this year. They also got that running back out of Ooh, I wanna I wanna say Alabama or Georgia. Ja, is it Josh Jacobs, something like that. And point being is that they have a much better supporting cast, so he will this will be his prove it year. If he does if he doesn't do good this year, I think he's on his way out of Oakland after that. If he does not do good this year, because he has a supporting cast, he has the best wide receiver in the game. He didn't have a top running back. That guy's gonna play well in their system with a good old line. So if, he, if they don't play well, that's all on that's on Derek Carr. But as far as Derek Carr, I'm gonna put him above average because no, I gotta put him in average. He's average right now. He's he's average. I can't braid him above that. I don't know how he's gonna play. He has glimpses, but not nothing special just yet. Kirk Cousins, another guy that I'm I was not really a fan of. He's not a game changer. So he doesn't. If you have if you like Drew Brees, if you have all the skills. But you don't always take over. You're an elite. If you don't have the, he doesn't. Kirk Cousins doesn't have the strongest arm. He's not the most accurate. He makes bad decisions. He was if he had a loaded Viking squad this year and struggled with it. I'm gonna put him above average just for the fact that he is still. He's not. He's not. He's not just a game manager. He can still make good throws, but I feel like he should have been average. But I'm also gonna put these in order here. I put Baker Mayfield ahead of Josh Allen. Now we got Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston, he is not that great of a quarterback. He has he has the talent. He just doesn't have the consistency or the decision making. So I wouldn't put him in below average because obviously there's worse quarterbacks than him, although some people might not be too they might be not hesitant at all to just toss him in there. But he could still pass for four hundred and fifty yards. He could still throw five touchdowns. He could still rush for some touchdowns. He can score, he can he can do it all. He just can't be consistent about it, and he can't keep him in the game. He's not a guy that you can trust in the game, so I'm going to have to put him in an average. See, Alex Smith is a game manager with not the best skills, which is why he could be an average, because he can win games. Jameis Winston has the skills, but he's just not consistent, so there's reasons for why they're an average. Now, Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott, in my opinion, is above average. I wouldn't put him in a borderline elite. I wouldn't even put him in elite. He's a game manager, just like Alex Smith, but he can rush better. He can pass a little better. And so far, he's proven to be a better decision maker than the guys on average. Now, could he take the step to board on elite? He's got he's got the receivers now. He's got Amari Cooper. He's got some rookies. He's got Gallup. He's got Zeke. He's got the old line coming back. If everything clicks, he could push for borderline elite elite status. But that is to be seen. I could, based on what he has done in his career, it does not look like anything more than a very good game manager that can also scramble and use his legs. But that will be seen this season. Moving on to Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold's in a much better situation than he was last year. He's got Le'Veon Bell to gash the defense, and he plays partially plays receiver. So Le'Veon Bell's gonna increase his receiving numbers. He's gonna make things easier, give him easy passes, easy passing yards. I think that alone, with a with an improved potential situation with coaching wise and offense, I think Sam Darnold could take a leap to being above average this season. And that's about it as far as I think. Now, with Eli Manning. It's a tough one. I'm a Giants fan. 
But I have, to put, I have to put him below average. I mean, I thought about it, but I, I have to. There's times when he looks like he has the potential to be a very average quarterback, but he even messes that up. Nothing against Eli, but I get it. He's scared already of being sacked so many times with his O-line. He, he's very flustered. If he had a if he had an under pressure stat, he'd be a 10. He gets very flustered. He just checks down now. He's scared. He can't he doesn't he can't even wait for it to make plays because he's too scared to be hit. Now Ryan Fitzpatrick. Honestly, I'd put him at average. I'd put him at average. I mean, him and Jameis together combined for one of the better passing offenses in the league. They're just not consistent. If they if they could have if they have consistency in their game to their high level of play, they'd be like borderline elite, but they don't. Because at their best, they're 300 yards, four touchdowns. I've even seen him throw for five, but they're not. Now, Nick Foles, I'd also put him at average. I, I mean, yeah, okay, he, he won a Super Bowl, but besides that, on a, on, a, on a regular basis, he's just a regular quarterback. He's nothing special. He's just a regular quarterback. Yeah, he played good. He played big in one big game, but so did Eli, and look where Eli is. Now, Jared Goff, I feel like he's a game manager with above average skills i'm gonna put him in borderline elite just because if i don't i feel like i might get crucified because i feel like yeah I, you know he is borderline elite but to an extent i feel like he's just a overrated game manager but you know borderline elite you know i'll give it to him he puts up the stats to match it so i can't really say he doesn't now matty ice people might call him elite i'm also going to put him right in the ben roethlisberger tier right above him actually matty ice is another guy that just isn't consistent he'll go on an eight game tear of being the number one quarterback in the league and then go on another eight game tear where he's literally a, a barely above replacement quarterback. So to be elite, you have to be consistent every game. Like you have to know that every game you're gonna put up stats. And there's not one guy below Drew Brees that every game you can trust him for 300 yards, three touchdowns and a win. No one. And if you, if you play fantasy, you especially know these stats specifically. Drew Brees is the only consistent one so far. Now we got Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy Garoppolo, unproven. Don't care what you say. I'm, I'll, I believe he might play, I believe he'll play above average. But I'm not putting him board on elite like some people have more top five. That's crazy. I'll put him here because he has potential. I believe he will perform above average when he comes back. He'll still have. He'll have. Uh, damn, I forget the running back on the 49ers that was on the Vikings a while back. Joe McKinnon. McKinnon. Okay. He has McKinnon. Decent receivers. A great tight end. A top tight end. So I believe he'll have, he'll have just enough to play pretty well. Even at his worst. Now we got. Is that Joe Flacco? I think that's Joe Flacco, but he's on the Broncos now. I'll, I'll give Joe Flacco the average nod. I'm not going to talk too much about him. He's a big arm. Decent accuracy. Kind of like a, a slightly better Eli Manning right now. Now we got, I believe that is Case Keenum. Case Keenum, I'm going to also put in the average column. He's just average. Like he can, he can manage the game. He can pass for two touchdowns. Maybe 200 yards, 250 yards. Nothing special. Now, Lamar Jackson, I don't know. I mean, maybe they weren't just letting him pass last year enough, but in my, when I watch him play, he can run, but he doesn't look like a quarterback just yet. But I have to put him, I don't know. I don't really, just based off his team, I see him being average for now. I'm not going to put him anywhere higher until I see him pass and be a quarterback because if history tells you anything, a quarterback that doesn't play, like, doesn't play like a quarterback isn't usually a quarterback for too long or they get hurt. So... I don't think the Ravens will even do that great this year. So I'm just going to wait and see with the Ravens. See how Lamar Jackson does. And I'll move him up as, a, as, as accordingly. But I just, I don't see it. I mean, yeah, he's a rusher, but this is a quarterback list. Got to see how he does as a quarterback. He melted down in the playoffs. He, he, was, he just kind of controlled games. It wasn't like anything special. It was just, just enough to win. That's not, a great, that's not a great method of playing just enough to win football when you verse teams like the Chiefs. You'll never beat the teams like the Chiefs and the Patriots playing just enough to win. Now we got Phillip Rivers. He's borderline elite. Another guy that can't seem to just win it and just, you know, like, just, oh, he just can't go all the way. He has, he's inconsistent. He is amazing. He's an amazing quarterback. He is a top five quarterback, in my opinion. But to, these are top, to top 10 quarterbacks right here. This is where you're going to see the top 10s. But to crack the elite or the superstar status, you have to do it every game. Like, he's a, he's a, he's a top quarterback. He's just, he just has trouble finishing and isn't always the most consistent. He is. He does put up a lot of stats. I mean, quite honestly, maybe he should be elite. You know what? You know what? Phillip Rivers gets the elite nod. He gets the elite nod. 
he does put up stats on a 16 game basis he does have trouble winning sometimes and in the playoffs but you know what based off of what i've been saying he should be elite now we got andrew luck andrew luck is going to be an elite quarterback he is as good as they come he has some injury he had some injury issues in the past with his shoulder it's still we still don't know but he's looking good he had a great top five season last year he's a great quarterback he's mobile he can pass he's a good decision maker and he doesn't let things get to him. That's the best part about Andrew Luck. He'll throw three picks and then he'll throw six touchdowns. He does not get down on himself. He does not, he's not one of the quarterbacks that throw a pick and lose momentum. Now we're at Mariota. I'm a big fan of Mariota. At least I was. But he has not proven to be what many thought he was. So they still think he could... They, they still trust him enough to think he's a franchise quarterback. But at this point, it's pretty obvious he's just an average quarterback. He could have a big game, but not consistently. He's not even the best game manager. They're playing just enough to win football, just like Lamar Jackson except Lamar can run a lot better. So for that reason, I'm gonna have to put him in the average tier. I don't really see him, I don't really see his potential taking off like we thought it would. I think he would just be what he is and they'll have to adjust accordingly when the time comes to change quarterbacks. Now, Mitchell Trubisky, I'm gonna put him in the above average category, somewhere right along here, because he did prove to be really good. He was inconsistent. If he takes a step forward, he could easily go into the elite category, borderline elite. If he takes a step forward with his consistency and the Bears play better as a, as a whole. Obviously, the receiving corpse was okay. Allen Robinson didn't play like he's up to par with what we thought he could be. The team, if it plays well, the running game is on point. Cohen's on point. I think that Trubisky to take the leap to borderline elite, but for now, he will be an above average. Now we got Patrick Mahomes. This is easy for me. He's going to superstar status. He's a guy that puts a team on his back. He can make any throw in the game. He could throw the ball 80, he could throw the ball 10, no look. He's accurate, he throws a tight spiral, it's on point, it, he hits tight windows. He's everything you want in a quarterback, and he's mobile. He can win, he's gotten far in the playoffs, and if not, if not for a pass, in, no, what was it, an offsides, or a, um, a false, false start, whatever you want to call it, I'm pretty sure it's offsides, of uh, D Ford, they would probably be in the Super Bowl. They had the game, Tom Brady threw the pick. You could say it's because he went off uh, off sides, but if D4 doesn't go off sides, arguably this guy's in the Super Bowl in his first real season as a quarterback, his first full season as a starter, and you, you can't that can't go unnoticed. He is right now, and with his age, he's only getting better too. That, it's crazy. He's at he just started. He's not even in his prime yet, so you got to keep him there. Andy Dalton, I'm gonna put him at. Oh, this is tough. This is tough. Put him at average too. He's not really above average. He, at one point, he was looking like he could be above average, but he really just flamed out last year with the Bengals, and he has a good amount of weapons. He has Mixon. He has A.J. Green. He has Tyler Boyd. And he's Dalton's okay. I don't see him being much better than above average. I don't see him something to be excited about. The majority of these average quarterbacks, that's why they're there. I'm not going to talk too much about Andy Dalton. Now, Russell Wilson, he's elite. I'll toss him in there. He's very... He's kind of like an unsung hero every year. He does everything. He, like... Even if they don't win... He's from Pat Mahomes, like he puts the team on his back, he scrambles, he makes plays, he makes things happen, he makes passes that he probably shouldn't, and it, it works out for him. It really does. He, he's, a, he's a leader, so for that reason alone, he'll be an elite. He's consistent too. Russell Wilson's very consistent. He always, every week, gives you a, a decent amount of something to, to work with. He's never going to leave you flat like some of these quarterbacks right here who completely go missing sometimes. Now we got Aaron Rodgers. He's elite. Just off of talent alone and peripherals and what he's done he's elite just that alone he's consistent too the only issue was his team his, his team and his coach we hope i mean this so this season will prove if it was a team of the coach or if it was just him you know regressing but as of now aaron Rodgers still lead i watched this guy make throws that are very they look impossible he makes plays you don't think and he's he's he's, he's a very very low-key runner he's very he's pretty fast i've seen him in person and he he can run he can scramble so very well rounded now josh rosen i'm gonna give him the average nod he's in miami now we got to see what he can do first we can't just throw him in there just assuming that he's just gonna be amazing so he has potential he was a great bargain for the dolphins but now he's got to prove himself and until then he's showed me nothing yet to this point to prove that he'd be anything else now matt stafford i'm gonna put into above average honestly right over here probably right behind mayfield Matt Stafford is one of the strongest arms in the league. He's accurate, inconsistent, decent supporting cast. He has a pretty good supporting cast, so I mean, that alone should elevate him a little bit, but Matt Stafford is what he is. He's not proven. He's not changing much more than he is already. He's kind of already hit his prime, in my opinion, and that's what he's at right now. Ryan Tannehill, 
I think Ryan Tannehill is below average, personally. People still, they, they had hope for him. He has proved four to six seasons already of just inconsistency, false hopes. I think he is very, he's, he's incapable. Steven, his backups come in and do better than him sometimes. He's all right, but I put so many people in the average tier. So, you know, he gets, he gets the below average tier. Tom Brady, from a stat standpoint in the regular season, he would probably be right here. From a winning standpoint and a, and a, and a, a genius standpoint, he's up here. Because if you think about it, if you play fantasy or anything, you know that Tom Brady's stats are not even top 10 quarterback worthy, to be honest with you. He's, he's not even as usable as he used to be. But he wins games. He manages games. But he's, a, he's, he's not just a Dak Prescott type game manager. He wins. He wins playoff games. He wins Super Bowls. He takes them all the way. There's It's enough said to be about Tom Brady's ability to win. He is a Pat Mahomes type. Put the team on his back and win it for him. Now we get to Sean Watson. I believe he is borderline elite. If he can just put all of his skills together and he gets his own line fixed, he could move into the elite category. He's one of the fastest quarterbacks in the league. He can also pass for 400, 500 yards on you. He's got a good supporting cast. All he needs is an O-line. If he gets an O-line and he's obviously he's young, he just came off a massive injury. He can get it all together. He could be a top quarterback. I also think Carson Wentz is borderline elite. People like to trash him. Carson Wentz at his best was an MVP candidate like Derek Carr was, but Carson Wentz has better pure ability. He's a runner. He can run. He can mobile. He has good vision. He makes good play. He makes good decisions now. There's been some questions about his team's his team chemistry. There's been some questions about his injuries. If he can stay healthy with a good supporting cast, he will easily be a borderline elite quarterback. Now, I believe this is Dwayne Haskins. I believe in his first season with the Redskins, he will be average. They don't have the best supporting cast. He's gonna he's gonna there's gonna be a learning curve. I don't want to overhype him. I'm gonna toss him into average. Drew Locke, I believe might get the nod for the Broncos in the second half of the season after the Flacco and Keenum, they're all done. Drew Locke, I believe, will play average also. I don't see him being anything special right away. He's more of a development type quarterback. So if they even give him the nod this year, it's not going to be anything special. Now, Kyler Murray, I believe when he comes in, he will be above average. And that is only because of what he brings to the table. He is Russell Wilson-like. He has a strong arm. So... Typically, for like a Rosen, Rosen wasn't mobile. So when Rosen's line failed on him and sucked, he couldn't do much. Kyler Murray can escape that and take advantage of David Johnson, take advantage of Larry Fitzgerald, take advantage of that small, fast receiver that I can't remember the name of that was a rookie last year. Now, I think he's going to be above average just for the fact that he's probably going to put up like 500 to 1,000 rushing yards, probably two to 3.5 thousand passing yards, depending on how much they pass. He's going to put up the stats to prove to be an above average quarterback with a below average line. So that just shows what he could do. Uh, Daniel Jones, I'm going to put him below average just because I don't see him really playing much the first year. I feel like they're they're so far up Eli's ass right now that they're just going to let Daniel Jones sit for now. And just based off of what I've seen in his tape and his stats and everything, I don't think he's ready to go right away. So for that reason, just below average because I don't think, I think even if he comes, he won't be a difference maker just yet. As much as at least Haskins, Locke, or Murray will right off the bat with their team you know obviously lock is a better supporting he's a pretty good supporting cast of receivers and running backs so guys that is it for ranking nfl qbs if you like this video make sure to drop a like down below let's hit 50 likes in this video and make sure to comment and if you like it i could be doing other cool stuff like ranking the best running backs ranking the best wide receivers rankings anything at the nfl and even some cool ones like ranking the avengers and my favorite characters i was thinking about doing it and then i saw some other youtubers just do it so now i'm kind of motivated to do it more but if you liked it, let me know down below. Viewership will show. Likes will show. Comments will show. If you like it, I'll do more of these. This is fun. I really enjoy this. Keeps it interesting. But that's it, guys. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. And don't make, don't forget to subscribe also. I'm out.